Hey guys, episode 48 here, uh, Wednesday, March 6th. Bitcoin is at uh, just under 67,000. Um, looks like we're going to try another attack at uh, the all time high either today or this week. Um, uh, so, in this episode, I just want to go over a little bit this S curve stuff that some people have been talking about. I've been talking about a little bit and uh, show you a little model of this that I did with using the Gompertz uh, S curve. Um, it's has some interesting uh, characteristics that um, that I think is is worth caring is worth uh, going over, um, and that's about it. So let's first look at the Bitcoin price. Uh, let's look at the Bitcoin price here. Uh, here we go, and uh, yeah. we're basically back to sixty seven thousand um, on the day here. Uh, on the month, we basically came up. We tried to break through. We puked all the way down to 60,000, and we're right back up. Um, basically, do not sell your Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, if you sell your Bitcoin, you're giving up your, your chance at uh, potentially one of the great uh, wealth creation mechanisms known to mankind. Um, and so... I just want to talk a little bit about where this thing's going because a lot of people are like, is this going to a million? Is it going to a million in eight years? Is it going to a million in three years? What is it? And, um, you know, I do want to make the case that, okay, so let's look at the power law model really quickly. So the power law model, you know, which fits the data really well uh, on a log log basis. And you look at it kind of, where is it going? Well, you kind of get to a million in 2032, right? So you get to a million in about uh, eight years from now. Uh, you get to a million. And then you get to 10 million in about, uh, it takes you another 11 years after that to get to 10 million. So eight, mil eight years to get to one and 11 years to get to 10. Uh, that's, not, that's not terrible. <laughs> um, the problem with the power law that I see so the power law just keeps on going, right? So if you just keep on plotting, it goes to 100 million, 200 million, et cetera. And, you know, that's just not possible in a world unless you have some kind of major hyperinflation because, um, you know, what, what otherwise we're looking at is there's a certain amount of wealth and, uh, and you know, Bitcoin is not going to be 100% of that in wealth ever. Uh, I don't think that Hal Finney didn't think that. Uh, and so, you know, a good way to look at this is basically just to sort of say, okay, at some percentage of wealth, let's just call that the maximum. I don't know if that's 20%, 40%, whatever it is, uh, but that's, that's sort of your maximum. And just think in terms of nominal dollars, just don't worry about inflation. I think, I think that gives you a better picture. So, this is model is, 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 is great for now, right? But, you know, if we believe that kind of hyper uh, Bitcoinization is Bitcoin 20 million, then we're kind of only in the first percentage of that. And so it's possible that this model here looks great, but, you know, it sort of evolves into more of an S-curve thing. So what are S-curve models look like? Well, Here's kind of an S-curve model, the Gompers mo uh, model. So this model is a very interesting model. This is, model is used in particular, the example I liked a lot, which is to uh, model mobile phone adoption usage, right? So everybody now has a cell phone. But I remember when I was on Wall Street, nobody had cell phones. They were, there was a, a few of them that were starting to appear, you know, just like in the movie Wall Street with Michael Douglas with the huge... Uh, cell phone. There was very, very few. And that went from very few to a lot, right? So this function here has really three variables in it. It has this A, B, and C variable. A is really the asymptote. So let's just say that's 20 million. That's kind of where we think Bitcoin, we, we're at sort of hyper-Bitcoinization. And again, let's just not get caught up in sort of inflation adjusted. Let's just say 20 million, okay? And then you have sort of these two models. B is sort of the 
inflection of the curve, and then, uh, sorry, C is the inflection of the curve. The, the higher C is, the more it inflects, and the otherwise it's more elongated. And then B is sort of the offset here, right? So this is a very interesting curve. So um, I have modeled uh, this curve here. And this is an example of this curve that I modeled out here. And this is about... This is a, seems to be about right. So it uses the values A, 20 million. That's sort of like, that's where we go. B, it's put at 20, and C is 0.1, right? So don't worry about these numbers too much. The main thing is, it sort of says, and it's not accurate. It sort of says, this, this particular fit says that we're, we should be at 230,000. We're at 100, we're at not even 100, we're at 60,000. But... The key thing here is we get to a million here, you know, a little sooner than before, you know, so we get there in four years as opposed to eight. Um, but the interesting thing is in this model, we only get to 10 million again around the same time, 2043, right? So uh, it doesn't really make you get to 10 million much faster, Um so I do think the one million is is a is one million within eight years seems doable. Uh, Ten million within eight years does not seem doable on this. And by the way, this particular model actually fits the the regular data pretty well, right? As you can see, this is not terrible, right? So if I look at this thing in log log space, it actually is doing an okay job. I mean, I would say it's doing as good a job as the power law, right? So. I think this is probably maybe more likely that we're in some kind of Gompertz function rather than in a power law function. I definitely feel like, you know, the adoption of Bitcoin similar to mobile phone usage uh, makes sense to me. Uh, it also makes sense that it would take roughly 40, 50 years to kind of get full uh, adoption. I mean... Bear in mind, mobile phone now, these things came out in 1980, right? And, uh, you know, it's been 40 years. So I think 40 years is, is not a terrible number for the adoption of something like Bitcoin or mobile phones. Uh, Facebook was a lot faster, right? But, you know, it's a lot easier just to click on a few things and invite your friends than to go out and buy a phone. And you've got, you've got network effects with the other people having to get the phone and you sort of almost have Metcalf's law kinging in there. So, but I do think that this, this is an interesting model for this stuff. Um, and you know, the last thing I would like to share is, uh, is really just this, um, this observation, right? That, um, this observation that Bitcoin itself is only, 3,000 lines of code, uh, and or at least it was initially. Right now, it's about 100,000 lines. There's a lot of stuff in there with SegWit and, and so on, Taproot. But, uh, you know, 3,000 lines is pretty short. I mean, that's like the Great Gatsby. And uh, it really, you know, it, it says something that we've actually got from with just this 3,000 lines of open source code passed on, we've, we've, we're able to create this you know, new world uh, form of money. And, uh, and, and I think that's, you know, it really tells you something that you cannot underestimate. You should not underestimate Bitcoin. Um, it's easy to say, yeah, yeah, it's just it's, it's fluff. But the fact that these 3,000 lines of code have created what what is now something that is over a trillion has a hundred million users, really tells me that it's going to continue, right? This thing is going to absolutely continue, and I really think now deep in my in my bones that we're going to get to a million dollar Bitcoin. Now, I, you know, if, if you've got a lot of Bitcoin like me, that's kind of realistically all you need, right? Like I, I don't need more than a million dollar Bitcoin. I think we're going to probably get more than a million dollar Bitcoin, but I don't need it. Um, you know, so uh, so that's kind of my video for today. I, I really think uh, probably an S curve is 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 likely, but I don't think there's any data 
out there to suggest that we're anywhere close to this S-curve inflection point. Um, I do think that there's reason to believe with the CTF that things could be moving much faster on this inflection point. But, um, but you know, at least the models that I've been playing with suggest it still will take a fair amount of time to get to 10 million. So I don't want to sound bearish, but, uh, but yeah, look, I think my, my goal is to see a million in the next, uh, in the next eight years that that would make me extremely happy. Um, I'm, I'm a simple guy. I don't need more than a million. Uh, and, uh, you know, Alaska doesn't need more than a million either. She's 11 years old. So, you know, she's not going to make, a million Bitcoin, but uh, you know, hopefully, she's going to, and her friend Pip are going to see multiple sixty-nine thousands in her lifetime. So, uh, with that, I will catch you guys online.